Time again for monthly solar stats for my system here in Worcestershire in the UK for the month of June 2021. Okay everybody, so a few days later than planned, but I've had other videos been trying to get together and been away a little bit and work is pretty busy as well. But uh, again, it's time for the solar stats uh, for my system here in the UK. So as mentioned before, I'm based in Worcestershire in the UK and I'll put a little screen up now to explain the system I have if you've not seen it before and then go through uh, some of the kind of performance and specifications. As mentioned in previous videos, I try to do a little bit of a more streamlined version these days as opposed to going through the day by day because people seem to lose interest based on uh, the metrics and the analytics. So hopefully a different format slightly I'm trying this month as well. So welcome any feedback and comments down below. If you haven't done already, please consider liking, subscribing, pressing that uh, bell notification icon it would be really, really helpful. So let's uh, crack on with the information. So as mentioned, I'm here in uh, Worcestershire, UK. I have a nine kilowatt solar array based up of 30 PIMAR panels. Behind each one of those is a solar edge optimizer and those all connect back to a six um, kilowatt solar edge inverter. So again, I am slightly limited in terms of um, what I can generate, but that's actually a good kind of setup. You want a larger array and slightly smaller inverter to kind of maximize the performance over the whole year. Connected to that, I also have the Tesla Powerwall 2. That's the non-backup gateway uh, edition. So if I have a power outage, my system will shut off. It doesn't isolate from the grid. And then connected to that, I have a couple of my energy products as well. Most notably, the My Energy Eddy, which I use to heat my water tank with solar surplus, and a My Energy Zappy Generation 1, which I use to charge our electric vehicles, which currently are a Polestar 2, which has a 78 kilowatt hour battery, and a Nissan Leaf, which has a 40 kilowatt hour battery. And then finally, for when obviously I'm not running from solar, I have to pull from the grid. So obviously for my importing electricity and gas, I am with Octopus Energy currently on their go tariff. What that means is in between half past midnight and half past four in the morning, I only pay five pence per kilowatt for my electricity, which is when I do most of my kind of off peak stuff. So charging cars, topping up the power and what have you. And as always, I mentioned, if you decide that you want to change energy provider and Octopus Energy may be the provider for you, then if you use the link in the description, both you and I will get a 50 pound credit to your bill. So that's the system that we have set up. So let's have a little look at the performance for June, 2021. Okay, so you can see on the screen here, I'm using slightly different graphics uh, this month. So Solar Edge have updated their app on the iPhone. So I thought I'd use this uh, information uh, instead because I think it, it looks quite funky. So you can see I generated 1.1 megawatt hours of energy in June. I was able to self-consume 80% uh, of that uh, and the rest of it did get exported over the month. And our consumption was 1.07 um, megawatt hours. So again, we generated more than we consumed but again based on when we're having to use stuff we did have to import some from the grid so 0.12 megawatt hours was imported from the grid if you look at the solar production throughout the month you can see it started off pretty well and was pretty good uh, through the middle of june but then after the kind of 16th things started to go and go downhill a couple of little spikes of good days but in general june just felt like a weird month um in in terms of performance and you can see there uh, for the consumption large majority of the time my focus is on self-consumption i don't want to put anything back into the grid so i'm either trying to charge up the tesla power wall to charge our electric vehicles or heat hot water i don't want to put back to the grid uh, if i can so in general doing a pretty good job of that you can see there's only a few days um, where we didn't self-consume 
everything. If you compare this to previous years, again, you will see that June of 2021 uh, actually wasn't too bad. It actually performed better than previous years. It was looking a bit touch and go uh, for a little while, but actually this June actually was my best June on record so far. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I think you may be watching this video like many people watch some of the other solar uh, videos on this channel because you're thinking about getting solar in the UK but you're not sure if it makes sense because the weather's pretty crappy a lot of the time. I still think it makes a lot of sense and actually wish I got solar earlier than I did. But again, it's that trade-off. You're about to afford it uh, and decide that you can invest in something like this because it's not cheap, even though it does continue to get cheaper. So if we look at um, just a couple of days of interest, really uh, looking through the stats, there's only kind of two days that I thought um, was interesting. So the highest generation day was the 5th of June, where we generated 57.7 kilowatt hours of solar energy. I think that might be my best solar performance day to date. I need to check again, because that's one thing about the Solar Edge app that I would like to have as a feature, is to be able to easily tell me what my highest performing day was ever. I'll put a link or a little note uh, across the bottom here if I've been able to find it by the time I do the editing. But yeah, really impressed with that day. Still my goal or my dream would be to have a day where I generate 60 kilowatt hours, but I'm not sure if that's actually possible or not, but we shall see. You can see on the graph that it was a good solar curve. Obviously we hit our clipping at six uh, kilowatts because of the inverter restriction. Uh, if Before you put a note in the comment, I have looked in the past at what it would mean if I got a larger inverter to minimize clipping. Uh, obviously it would be slightly better, uh, but I only have around just over 2% clipping per year. So the cost of an additional inverter and obviously having to have a DNO, a new DNO request put in, it would impact my fit and everything. It's just not worth it. Uh, then if I had a look with my highest generation, uh, not my highest generation, my highest usage day um, was the 28th of June. Uh, and on that day, um, we only had 7.74 kilowatt hours of production, uh, but I consumed 51.0 kilowatt hours and had to import a big chunk of that. So you can see uh, on the left-hand side, that big curve or the big red block is whilst I'm off peak, so only paying five pence uh, per kilowatt, but uh, I'm, I'm charging the power. Well, I think the cars were plugged in as well, or one of the cars was plugged in charging, and there may have even been a little bit of hot water uh, as well. So again, not a bad day again, even though, um, it does seem like a lot, and it is a lot, because we are quite a, a high consuming household, but uh, the prices are, are pretty good. And you'll see that on uh, some of the later slides where I break down how much my electricity bill was for the month. Okay, so if we move on to the Tesla Powerwall 2 performance, so I've gone back through and looked at the day by day to try and look at the efficiency. So we put 323.5 kilowatt hours of energy into the power wall. So that will be some from the grid and some of it will be from solar. I can't easily differentiate right now um, between um, the two. But again, as again, if anything off the grid would have been during off peak times. Out of it, we managed to get 286 kilowatt hours of energy, which results in about an 88.4% efficiency, which isn't too bad. I think they say that ideally it's about 90% efficiency. It's a little bit under that, but I'm happy with how the, the Power Wall 2 continues to perform. If we look at the eddy in terms of water heating, unfortunately, uh, I've done this a couple of times now. I made a note that um, I hadn't looked at the actual eddy device itself or the Zappi on the last day of the month. And unfortunately, then when you look in the app, it can't tell you what, what came from um, solar surplus, just how much energy went into water. So. Um, you can see here we put 126.1 kilowatt hours of energy into uh, the hot water. 
And then if we move on to the Zappi, so again, remember we've got the um, the Nissan Leaf and the Polestar 2. So again, because not able to take a picture, I can't tell you how much of it was green and how much it came from the grid. Um, and I still wish my energy would have this available in the app. It's available on the screen, so why can't you make it available in the app? It's quite annoying. Uh, but we put 224.1 kilowatt hours of energy into our electric vehicles in the month of June. Okay, so moving on to the kind of final parts in terms of how much does it cost us here in our house for the month of June. So you can see here, uh, as we kind of covered off already, so we had 32.1 kilowatt hours of energy that we imported from the grid uh, at peak times during the month of June, and then 94.3 kilowatt hours that we imported during off-peak times. So as a result of that, the average cost per kilowatt hour that we paid was 6.87 pence per kilowatt hour, which meant our total electric bill uh, for the month of June was £16.62, which I think is, is pretty damn good. Uh, and then I'll just include the cost here. So we used 81.4 kilowatt hours of gas. The only thing we use gas for is for heating, which again, there hasn't been a need to heat the house uh, during June. But if we feel we need a bit of hot water because there wasn't enough solar surplus to top it up, um, we will sometimes boost it with gas. And that's what we did um, this month a few times, which meant we paid £7.55 for our gas costs. So both, again, remember the gas costs and electricity costs also includes the standing uh, charge costs as well. So again, still a, a pretty cheap month in terms of energy bills. And again, there, if you are thinking about moving to Octopus Energy, please consider using the link, it'd be much appreciated. Finally, the thing that I thought uh, I'd include in terms of the solar payback. So obviously the idea of solar panels at some point, they break even and then, um, you know, it is literally free electricity. I do a, a review of this every year to see how the performance is uh, paying back, but I'll explain some of these costs here on this next slide. So I got in on the solar, at, the tail end of the UK feed-in tariff. So this is where my numbers are based. Again, I don't, um, I obviously do export a little bit, but I get paid based on the feed-in tariff exporting, but I also include some costs that if I wasn't on the feed-in tariff and the amount of energy I have left that I export, how much I would have got paid uh, for that as well. So again, I'm on one of the last feed-in tariffs. So in terms of the payment I get for generation during June, I'll get paid 45 pounds and 38 pence. Uh, regardless of what I export, um, there's this, this strange calculation that give you 50% basically of what your generated cost was like a deemed export. Um, and I will get paid uh, 30 pounds and 25 pence for those um, deemed exporting, regardless of whether I exported it or not. Then in terms of the amount of solar I generated, which means I didn't need to pull from the grid during peak times, that equivalent cost would have been 146 pounds and 80. So that means in total, the benefit that I get from having solar and not having to buy from the grid results in 222 pounds and 43 pence for the month of June. So that goes into my paying back uh, the cost of uh, buying the solar. I think when I last checked uh, from last year, I think we're looking at about nine years payback for um, the solar and my battery, not including the savings I get from out of not have to buy petrol and charge my electric cars up from the solar. But again, look in my year two updates, wait for the year three update to see the most relevant costs. Uh, and then finally, like I mentioned, if I wasn't on the feed-in tariff, um, it was 150 kilowatts that we exported uh, to the grid. So had we been getting paid for export at the current rates, which I think is about five pounds 50 or something, or, or no, five pence, five, you know, yeah, 0.5 pence or whatever it is. Uh, it would have basically uh, resulted in us getting paid £8.25 for exporting for the month of June. So I hope that helps and provides some continued insight if you're thinking about getting solar here in the UK and, and looking for a somewhat comparable system. The payback always is harder with the battery, but if you're not going to be at home um, to fully utilise your solar, I do recommend getting the battery. They continue to come down in costs, unless it's a power tool. They seem to continue to be going up in price. Um, but again, it just means that you can maximize your 
um, solar generation to use it when the sun goes down. And again, especially in the winter, you can maximize um, some of those costs of being able to charge it with off-peak energy. I have got a video on the channel where I speak about whether I think it makes sense. I still don't think batteries make financial sense, um, but I think it makes sense in terms of being able to maximize your solar generations and everything. So it's not always about a purely financial cost. So that's it for month of June. Again, please like, share, subscribe if you haven't done already and consider leaving comments below on what your solar generation was like uh, for the month of June 2021. And also if you have any questions or anything, then um, yeah, please leave those below as well. And also if you haven't done already, you may wanna join our Spectrum Geeks Discord channel to again, talk about solar or other geeky type things with uh, a few of us now that idle in the channel. So. Take care of yourself until the next month or the next video. Um, that's it for now. And uh, catch you on the next one. Bye for now.